Since last summer, I've kind of dropped out of parkour, felt a disconnection from the community and doing movement. That's largely down to injuries that have really got me down and haven't really progressed. Sort of goals and aspirations from a year ago feel so foreign to me because I just don't see them at the moment. So this was filmed back in May and was originally going to be its own full video, but since then, thankfully, things have changed a bit. I've trained with friends, I've tried to get out of this rut, and things are looking more positive. I want to make the most of the rest of the year, and to help myself I've come up with an idea. Yeah. A framework to help me with my recovery, and to one day get back towards the level I was training before this mess of injuries. It started with this graph. Seems simple, but no one wants to be this person, which is exactly where I've been going. And I thought of this idea. Get down on paper every challenge I can think of in Guildford that I've done or one day hope to do. A framework for progress. There's about 50 of them and they seem to organize themselves into levels. It goes without saying these are not groundbreaking challenges but it's the goal of working up the chain that I'm focusing on. I have no real expectations. I could do them all, I could do half. These videos will document how I get on. If this sounds like something you would enjoy, join me and make up your own list and follow along with me. For now, we'll join past me on day one of the challenge. Yeah. Oh, my original challenge was to do the, the downward free over the, the gap and stick it, but there's too much tree in the way, so I've changed my challenge to something easier to uh, make my life better. But I've never actually done the pre-up before, so that's why I'm doing it. So I'll do it again. Might do it one more time. There we go. So this is one of my challenges. It's quite high on my list. Um, not feeling particularly strong, so I might just come back and do it. I'm going to have to come back for this challenge because I'm not feeling strong enough. I have done it before, but I definitely felt much stronger when I was doing it and my grip was better. Yeah, I landed like this. One of my challenges is to do a 360 pre, and this is the OG Mihao spot. So, I'm going to do it. Alright, you do one. It does look really small on camera because it is really, really small. But you gotta start summer. You gotta start summer with this shit. <laughs> Apparently, it's too far. Cook? Nice. Do it, Kojangas. Whoa. That's actually kind of I mean, I went like five so miles sort of... to the right, but I'm gonna take it for today. It is a challenge ticked off my list. It's definitely a low hanging challenge, but we'll take it. I'm doing this Kong from here to there. It is very small, but it's scary because I don't like Kongs anymore. There we go. So that's what I need to do. Back in the day, it used to be fine. According to me, how I did it in four tries. I really don't know if that's true. Um, but I should really be able to do it because there's no consequence and it's literally two fat walls. So, yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Why did I'm you... just feeling low. You need to go a bit lower and then go up. Still a bit lower. Yeah. So I need to get lower here. Right before the chrome. Yeah. Ah, okay. Oh, yes. Yes. Yay. I'm happy. I'm not
before, but it's good to do it again because confidence. So we've been training Cathedral and one of my challenges is to do a back full off something onto grass because I've done these so many times at different points and I keep losing it and I just need to, every time I get to a block, do one. But I've done some, so I'm going to try and do it again. I'm testing the mic on me, so hopefully it cuts out the wind. Alright, hopefully I land it, because I've landed a couple, so... Okay, are you ready? It's very low, but I will take it. Um, next step is to do it in a line. Uh, no, on flat, because I've done that once. Landed it once in 2020, and then also to do it on concrete in a line off something. So. I think that's a good progression. Each one of them is good practice for concrete. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. Yeah, that would be good. Well, you send, send one very quickly. I need to pause it here to explain my experience with corks. These are the first I landed back in 2018, and then by mid-2019 they'd got better. Then late 2019 they were worse. Early 2020 they'd got better again, and then later 2020 they were worse. And then 2021 they were better again. And now, four years after landing them, we're back at the beginning here in 2022. There's a saying that I love which goes, when you start over, you don't that start from nothing, though. you start from experience. Oh, so much regression on these. I like to think that this saying applies oh, to pretty much everything except for corks. It feels like starting again with a little more fear yeah, each low. time. I hurt my ankle as well. Oh. The other ankle though. Oh, okay. Hard just ankle thing or? Yeah, just a bad ankle thing. So a large part of this recovery process is dealing with setbacks and the nature of my ankle injury leads to a lot of small niggles. Sometimes it can only take a small miscalculation or a bad landing and I can be out for a week or more with pain or swelling in my ankle and this is down to limited dorsiflexion in my left foot. Sadly it's never going to return to the flexion of my right foot which means that if I do land poorly, my ankle cannot absorb through with enough range of motion and it leads to a jolt and I get an ankle thing. And I think it's important to include that in these videos that it's not just a case of me going out day after day after day with no issues. Sometimes it can take a month to do five sessions. I can't do a lot of flips or high impact stuff if my ankle is sore. And that's a large reason why I've put off a lot of these challenges because I perceive them as threatening because they have a lot of impact or because the chance of pain is high and I need to push through them to make them easier. Because if something's easier, I'm less likely to land badly. A backflip or a cork, for example, I don't know where I'm going to land every time and so I'm more likely to hurt myself and then I don't do it and then I get worse and worse and then I'm more likely to hurt myself so it's this vicious cycle of lack of confidence. A lot of these videos will be me slowly figuring out what I can do again and trying to open more doors, trying to expand my comfort zone to include more movements and challenges that for the last couple years I've maybe thought were unachievable, unreachable because it's damaging. But maybe it's not damaging, maybe it's just practice. Maybe that's the way forward for me. You have to kind of zoom out and look at the bigger picture and not get wrapped up in, I can't do this, 
I could do this yesterday, now I can't. Everything is constantly changing. I have a habit of saying, I've lost this move. Doing something once doesn't mean that you have it. So I'm trying to frame that more positively to not feel like everything is a loss. But actually, how can I get back to the point where I can do that even more? I can do it today and tomorrow and the next day without feeling like it's a huge burden. Dear daughter, hold your head up high. There's a world outside that's passing by. Dear daughter, never lose yourself. Remember that you're like nobody else. Life throws you into the unknown, and you feel.